As I was proving through clinical research, I came across this one particular article which was titled, uh, Virginia Tech study finds that healthy bacteria in yogurt may reduce lupus symptoms in mice. And I kind of said, yeah, you know what, this sounds kind of like general run of the mill, and I passed it over. And then I looked at this chart, this chart that you see right there, and that's what grabbed my attention. For let's bring your attention to that one circled area E. Now, initially when I looked at this graph, I looked at the upper line there, which you see, and I thought that was the border to actually the XY axis, so to say. No, that's not the border. That's the survival rate of mice which have lupus that were treated with lactobacillus bacteria as compared to those that were not. That's not the border. That's the difference between the two, the incredible benefit. When that grabbed my attention, I decided to look into the study with a little bit more detail. And even though the study was initially in regard to kidney issues, basically lupus nephritis, which usually uh, arises from uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, it, it opened up a lot of major questions onto where do the symptoms of lupus begin as an autoimmune disease, and where does it end as possible a digestion of microbiome ailment. You'll understand more why in a second. But let us proceed. Take a look at that. That's just amazing. But let's go right into the public citation of the research, which we're going to read most from the abstract. But let's get started with the public uh, release. And the public release is nowhere near as interesting, actually, as the abstract or the full study, which is easily accessed in the common areas. So, Virginia Tech study finds that healthy bacteria in yogurt may reduce lupus symptoms in mice. To quote the researchers, in our initial, or their initial, 2014 paper, we found that mice with lupus had decreased amounts of lactobacillus, which led us to our hypothesis that adding this bacteria could ameliorate disease symptoms. Said the researcher, who added that she and her colleagues also found that mice had a leaky gut, a condition that affects the intestinal lining. Probiotics such as lactobacillus work by patching up and reversing the leaky gut. Now, the kind of interesting aspect here, when you have a leaky gut, you're having things basically enter parts of your system, so to say, that should not be there, that should be isolated to your digestive system. So, the question is, if you have these contaminants entering your bloodstream, per se, and you're treating it with anti-inflammatories and autoimmune, wouldn't it make more sense just instead of medicating the result of the leaky gut to patch the leaky gut? I don't know, just an idea, and I'm just throwing it out there. But let's look at the abstract. The abstract as follows. Control of lupus nephritis by change in gut microbiome. It's an interesting uh, end to the story. You'll see more why in a second. Using a classical model of lupus nephritis, we found a marked depletion of lactobacillus uh, in gut microbiota. Lactobacillus. All right, increasing lactobacillus in gut in the gut improved renal function. Remember, this is an animal model. In these mice, it prolonged their survival, as brought by evidence of that initial chart. We used a mixture of five lactobacillus strains. I'm not going to go through all of them, but they found the two that had the greatest impact were either an uncultured lactobacillus species or L. ruteri, which accounted for most of the observed effects. Further studies revealed that MRLLPR mice possessed a leaky gut, which was reversed by increased lactobacillus colonization, lactobacillus treatment contributed to an anti-inflammatory environment by decreasing, see that's the point, is if it's decreasing the, uh, the inflammatory markers down, how much of the drug is really required if you actually patch up the gut, so to say. Interleukin-6 and increasing interleukin-10 production in the gut in circulation to proceed forward. These beneficial effects were present in female mice and in castrated male mice. Something also played a role, which is kind of interesting too, that the hormones that men produce most of, even though lupus affects most, mostly women by like a nine to 10 ratio, uh, the lactobacillus did not work as well unless they castrated the mice. Sorry guys, but not a lot of guys have lupus as compared to the girls, but it does leave the door open to possibly uh, androgen deprivation therapy in combination with microbiota, uh, which can help maybe yield the same benefits as it did for these female animals, so mice. Suggesting that gut microbiota controls lupus nephritis in a sex hormone dependent manner. 
to conclude. Now, we don't have to go through a lot of the uh, uh, study parameters here, here because it's basically in animal models. We're not really looking for a lot of masking in the research where a mask is going to say. And it does require human trials in order to validate the information here as being solid. But to proceed, environmental triggers initiate SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, in susceptible individuals. Environmental triggers trigger it. A lot of people aren't told that. Since the gastrointestinal system serves as a first line of defense against various pathogens, the eliminating the type of flora and understanding the role of the microbiota plays in determining disease susceptibility in SLE patients are paramount. Still one of the researchers. We show in lupus pro mice that lactobacillus species in the gut microbiota exert anti-inflammatory effects by repairing the damaged gut bacteria, suppressing pro-inflammatory factors in lymphatic circulation and improving the ratio of regulatory versus pathogenic T cells, autoimmune, not autoimmune, you think, uh, thereby attenuating kidney inflammation. Remember, this study was originally done for the kidneys. While the relative abundance of lactobacillus appear, now here's, I want to repeat this once again because it's so incredibly important in regard to the symptoms of lupus, that it's tantamount that this actually be carried out to humans to see if these results end up being equal in the animals as it is, per se, to the humans. To repeat, while the relative abundance of the lactobacillus appears to be normal in systemic, systemic, I want to say systematic, systemic lupus erythematosus, patients in remission without active disease. Think about that. So when the lactobacillus are at a normal level, the disease appears to be in remission, not active. Food for thought. This does not preclude the possibility that the beneficial bacteria capable of strengthening the gut barrier are lacking in SLE patients with the active disease. So what looks pretty much like another innocuous uh, clinical research paper actually has an incredible profound effect in the next round of questions that should be asked in regard to systemic lupus erythematosus, SLD for short, and basically, is it best to be treated just purely with um, autoimmune drugs or anti-inflammatory, so to say, or maybe a different route should be looked at as well? I don't know. I'm just reading the research as presented. Again, I hope you find this information of use. The species of the bacteria which are utilized is to specific numbers. I'll make sure are posted uh, at the end here. So if you want to go with the exact strain, it's available to you, as well as you can pull up the information from the, in the method section of the, uh, the full study itself. Even though it did say they cultured primarily a large, I mean, they cultured the bacteria that came in, obviously they made a mention to the uncultured lactobacillus there, as noted. Again, we're off your channel, signing off. I hope you find this information of great use. And as always, look forward to seeing you all once again in seven days. I'll catch you then. Bye.